certain cancers like squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck or lungs or renal cell carcinoma or plasma cell myeloma, which is also known as multiple myeloma, they usually present with hypercalcemia and also lymphomas like adult T-cell lymphoma or Hodgkin lymphoma. And this kind of hypercalcemia, which is seen in presence of cancers or malignancy, it's called hypercalcemia of the malignancy. And the topic of this Insta lecture number 103 is hypercalcemia malignancy. We try to understand what are the four mechanisms through which this hypercalcemia malignancy develop or the cancer patients develop hypercalcemia. And for your information that hypercalcemia malignancy is considered, it's highly symptomatic and often it can cause death. So it's, it is considered as a medical emergency because it, uh, the serum calcium level could reach very high even more higher than 14 or 15 mg per dl. I think you normally know that this is normally over around range of 8.5 to 10.5, but it could become higher than 15 or 16 in case of hypercalcemia associated malignancy. So the term is hypercalcemia associated malignancy, or malignancy associated hypercalcemia, I better to say actually. So that means a cancer which is presenting with hypercalcemia. Hyper means increase, calcemia obviously means calcium, and amia, anything ending with amia means that is present in the blood, increased in amount, like ketonemia, increased amount of ketone in the blood. Uremia, increased urea in the blood. Anemia, no blood. So hypercalcium amia, hypercalcium, that means increased amount of calcium in the blood due to presence of some cancer and we call this condition hypercalcemia associated with malignancy or cancer associated hypercalcemia or malignancy associated hypercalcemia. The, and what cancers are commonly associated with? I told you, breast cancer, plasma cell myeloma or multiple myeloma. Currently, plasma, multiple myeloma is called plasma cell myeloma. Lung carcinoma, particularly the squamous cell carcinoma of the lungs, squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck, some genital urinary tract cancers, they can present with hypercalcemia and also Hodgkin lymphoma, certain non-Hodgkin lymphoma, like adult T-cell lymphoma. And if you look at these cancers which are presenting with hypercalcemia, there are four distinct mechanisms which actually I want to discuss through which the hypercalcemia develops in this cancer. The mechanism number one, which is the most common one, it's also called humoral hypercalcemia associated with cancer. It usually occurs due to the release of PTHRP, parathyroid-related protein, a kind of peptide which resembles parathyroid, but not actually parathyroid, which is secreted by the tumor cells. PTHRP. PTH stands for parathyroid, small r for related, and P for peptide, or protein, actually, which is a parathyroid-related protein. Some people also call it parathyroid-related peptide. And this is secreted by the tumor cells, particularly of the squamous cell carcinoma of the lungs and head and neck, or other squamous cell carcinomas also. And that can cause, because they basically resemble parathyroid and they bind with the parathyroid receptor one, just like normal parathyroid. And they can act like parathyroid causing hypercalcemia. Because we all know that parathyroid is a hormone which basically can cause, if there is increased in amount, basically can cause hypercalcemia, high serum calcium level. So PTHRP, which is released by certain cancers like squamous cell carcinoma, I mentioned head and neck, and the uh, lungs that usually present with this. And I think in while reading about the lung cancer, you have read this, that squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, which can present with hypercalcemia. This also by the same mechanism, by the release of PTHRP. The second mechanism through which hypercalcemia of malignancy occurs, that is called osteolytic metastasis. The idea here is different. The idea is that cancer cells, they metastasize to the bone, and in the bone, they activate, they release certain cytokines, which basically activate the osteoclast. And in the bone, you know there are two types of cells, osteoblast, which synthesizes bone, osteoclast, which erodes bone, osteoblast, which makes bone, and osteoclast, which eats bone, erodes bone, or this bony resorption, bone resorption. So in this mechanism, through this mechanism, what happens that certain cancers is like breast cancer, uh, also multiple myeloma, uh, causes hypercalcemia by the same mechanism. They 
metastasizes to the bone and in the bone in the skeletal part where they metastasize they basically release certain cytokines some people also call used to call it osteoclast activating factors oaf and that activates the osteoclast and you know what osteoclast does they eats bone or erodes bone so when osteoclast causes bone resorption or they erode the bone bone is basically made with uh, calcium calcium hydroxyapatite so obviously from the bone the calcium comes out into the blood circulation that causes hypercalcemia this is the second mechanism through which uh, a cancer can present with hypercalcemia it's particularly important for plasma cell myeloma or multiple myeloma and the breast cancer third mechanism which is relatively uncommon that is certain cancers like hodgkin lymphoma and certain non hodgkin lymphoma they can cause hypercalcemia by different mechanism by causing increased level of active vitamin d 125 dihydroxy vitamin d because these cancer cells are they indirectly stimulate the macrophages to release one alpha hydroxylase and one alpha hydroxylase is an enzyme as you know that is required for the activation of the vitamin d to create the active form of the vitamin d now active form of the vitamin d is created increased amount of active form of the vitamin d is created by these tumors which tumors i mentioned hodgkin lymphoma and certain non hodgkin lymphoma and by causing increased amount of active vitamin d 125 dihydroxycholic acetal or 125 dihydroxy vitamin d actually this active form of the biologically active form of the vitamin d when they are increased in amount obviously they would also cause increased level of the serum calcium because vitamin d usually helps to absorb more amount of calcium from the gut of the git so the net outcome would be that they are also causing hypercalcemia by different mechanism by causing increased amount of vitamin d and the last mechanism the fourth mechanism that you need to know that can also rarely can cause this hypercalcemia associated with cancer by the release of pth parathyroid hormone not parathyroid related protein but real parathyroid and some cases there could be ectopic parathyroid secretion which is very uncommon i told some pancreatic cancer some kind of gastric cancer even papillary carcinoma of thyroid has been reported to release this and also it has been reported and obviously it can be seen in truly parathyroid carcinoma because parathyroid carcinoma is a very rare phenomenon but it can also release a lot of parathyroid and can cause uh, this high serum calcium level so mostly this is due to parathyroid true parathyroid hormone secretion increased amount that can cause so what we learned that uh, what is hypercalcemia of malignancy hypercalcemia of malignancy means increased level of the serum calcium which is associated or associated with certain cancers cancers like i mentioned breast cancer renal cell carcinoma lung cancer squamous cell carcinoma head and neck squamous cell cancer hodgkin lymphoma non hodgkin lymphoma all this multiple myeloma plasma cell myeloma and by the way one important concept here i would like to tell that the most common cause of symptomatic hypercalcemia is hypercalcemia associated with malignancy the topic which we are discussing today and the most common cause of asymptomatic hypercalcemia is uh, primary hyperparathyroidism because primary hyperparathyroidism basically when it is detected the patient has no symptoms typical feature of hypercalcemia like they don't have neurological symptoms they don't have constipation or depression or polyuria polydipsia which is a usual feature of the hypercalcemia that is not seen so if a primary hyperparathyroidism presents with uh, hypercalcemia that is asymptomatic accidentally detected by routine blood test that is called asymptomatic hypercalcemia so please remember this two key concept the most common cause of asymptomatic hypercalcemia in the practice is primary hyperparathyroidism and most common cause of symptomatic hypercalcemia because when the increased level of serum calcium level is presenting with certain features the symptoms of high serum calcium level that is most common cause is this the hypercalcemia malignancy and as i mentioned the hypercalcemia malignancy is really present with four mechanism by the release of parathyroid related protein pth rp which is a peptide resembling like parathyroid acting on parathyroid receptor and just does the same thing they release increase the serum calcium level second mechanism and in those cases the cancer cells need not to metastasize to the bone they are basically releasing certain chemical molecule like parathyroid and they are causing high serum calcium level in certain cancers like breast cancer 
plasma cell myeloma or multiple myeloma the cancer cells can metastasize to the bone and there they can activate the osteoclast to cause more erosion of the bone so that from the bone the calcium comes out third mechanism which i mentioned is by production or increased activation of activated form of vitamin d which can present with hypercalcemia and fourth form i told truly increased secretion of the parathyroid hormone which would be ectopic and sometimes from the parathyroid carcinoma also that can result in hypercalcemia so this is the concept about the hypercalcemia of malignancy which i mentioned it's a very key concept because hypercalcemia of malignancy sometimes a patient may not die due to the cancer but due to may die due to the hypercalcemia associated with the cancer and this is considered a medic oncologic emergency also so that's all for the this topic hypercalcemia malignancy thank you very much